Hello, everyone. How are you? You had lunch? So now you're going to sleep during my talk. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember the faces. And you have badges, so I'll find where you live. <laughs> Joke aside, my name is Frederick Harper. You can call me Fred. I'm from Canada. It's really nice to be in a place like here uh, because it's hot. It's a little bit too much humidity for me. I'm sweating my life, but it's way better than the place where I live because where I live, during winter time, the wind hurt your face, like it's a struggle in Canada. But uh, I'm a consultant. I'm offering developer relation as a service. Please, during that talk, feel free to take pictures of that beautiful person in front of you, uh, share quotes, uh, slides, things you agree or disagree during the talk on Twitter. I'm F Harper on Twitter, H-A-R-P-E-R. -E feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Uh, come to talk to me after the conference, tell me that you like my talk uh, or that you really like my talk. Th those are the only two options uh, in terms of feedback. So uh, today I'm going to talk about developer documentation. You know the thing that we don't do super well, uh, and I'm not even talking about the code. I'm also talking about the documentation for developer. If you have a product or service and you need to have a good doc documentation for your developers, you know, we don't do it well most of the time. Let's be honest, it sucks. So today, uh, the goal is really to talk about documentation. Uh, feel free to ask me a question. I think for this talk, because we started a little bit late, we had some audio issue, and you know, the lunch and everything, the schedule was a little bit, like, move apart. But uh, I will take questions mostly, like, at the end of the talk, or you can come talk to me at a conference. But, like, if you are afraid of asking a question for whatever reasons, or, or you think it's a stupid question, which I don't think exists, you can still ask on fred.dev slash MAA. Uh, it's anonymous. I don't even keep the IP in any way. The IP is uh, everyone's going to be here. So I'm not going to know. Like, if you want to ask an uh, anonymous question during or after the talk, please feel free. I'm going to answer it tomorrow or today. So we only have 15 minutes, or we used to have 15 minutes. Now I think it's more than close to 45, 40 minutes because uh, uh, we had some audio issue, but still, even if I had the full 50 minutes to talk about developer documentation, it's not enough because it's a simple topic. At the same time, it can be a complex one. So the idea today is that I'm going to spend the time to, you know, just, just remember a little bit why it's important and what are the benefits of a good developer documentation. But more important, I'm going to share some tips and tricks about how to help you have a better developer documentation. So the idea is that you finish that talk, you go to another talk, hopefully you don't forget what you learned in this one, but like everything's gonna be applicable when you go back to work on Monday. Or at least you're gonna be able to share all that valuable information to colleagues who will view the documentation if you don't want to do or if you're not the person responsible for any developer documentation. So there's no good presentation without a quote. <laughs> you are developers, documentation, is an integral part of your product. One cannot exist without the other. It's a real nice person that said that. Frederick Harper, yes, I'm quoting myself. Joke aside, the important part is one cannot exist without the other. And yeah, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but at the same time, not that much. So when we talk about documentation, what are the benefits? The first one is that you probably have like one of the best products out there. Let's be honest your product is pretty good, huh? right? Your service for developers is pretty good. Your API is top notch. Your open source project is kicking ass. Some people disagree, like you need to change job if you don't believe that. <laughs> but hopefully your product is the best out there. If your developer documentation is not good, if people don't know how to use your product, if people struggle to just test your product, you're doomed. Company's gonna fail, product's not gonna work, you're gonna lose your job you're not gonna be able to come back to CDC next year. So hey, you better have a good developer documentation. The other benefit is that you're gonna have, if you have great documentation, if it's easier for developer to find the information that you're looking for and to be able to know how to use your product, you're gonna have less support question, which means less question on your Slack community if you have one, less question about your product on Stack Overflow, less question to your customers or technical support. So that's a benefit. But on top of that, let's be honest. Who are the most vocal people on the internet? Well, actually, there's many answers to that question. But like, if we go back to tech and tech stuff, the most vocal are people that are not happy with your product. 
And I say that and I feel like I'm on the stage and it's like if I'm better than anyone else, oh, trust me, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm the first one to complain about bad product or product that just make me lose my time or really bad developer documentation. I know I shouldn't do that, but I do it. And I'm not the only one. So if you have great developer documentation, you may prevent or at least minimize the negative feedback that you get about your product publicly. And you know, the thing is that we all have a personal brand. We all are influencers, each at our own, our own level. It doesn't mean that we influence everyone, but we have our friends, family, colleagues. So if we say something bad about a product, if Vincent, I know Vincent in the room, if I know Vincent, and uh, he's not a really good person, but outside of that, like if you, say, <laughs> if you say that, like, hey, Fred, that product is not good, I'm like, you know, I think I'm gonna trust Vincent. I, I may not even try the product because he told me that the product is not that good. So we influence people. So we want to minimize the negative feedback, especially because everyone now has a mic with social media, like we have public profile. It's really easy to talk negative things about product and it's not good for the business, it's not good for your job. By creating a great experience with the developer documentation, you're basically telling developer that you love them. And I'm not talking about open relationship, I'm just talking about you give them love, you give them a great experience, and it's a great way to start a relationship with developer. And at the end, you're gonna save money. So maybe not you yourself, but the company is gonna save money because less question, because more potential customers. And even with good documentation, you may have customers that will start to use more of your product or other paid features because they had a great experience, so they're gonna continue to use the product. So obviously, your product needs to be good. But if there is no way for me as a developer, no matter the amount of experience I have in tech, or no matter if I'm really tech savvy, tech savvy or not, if I don't find the information I wanted the documentation, it's not gonna work. And the thing though, is that often we write the documentation. The people building the product write the documentation. And when we do, we know what we're talking about. We build the product. It's good in a sense, but we need to think about people that don't know the product because they're potential customers. We need to think about the people that have less tech experience than us. So by, again, I'm repeating myself, but I want to drill this down on your brain today. By having a great developer documentation, you're gonna appeal to more people. You're gonna open the usage of your product to more people. That's gonna bring some community, all that. You're gonna create what I call virtual evangelists, people that will love your product, that will talk about your product. So instead of having the people that talk negatively about your product, now the photographer is here, so you need to do, oh, you're not even taking pictures while I do that. That was the, all the uh, exercise I've done today, so I'm good. <laughs> so, so, so I, uh, yeah, so instead of having the negative feedback, you're gonna get the positive one. And that's worth a lot of money, to have people out there, instead of saying shitty things about your product, saying great things. Lastly, I don't know for you, maybe it's because I have, I have ADHD, but sometimes I write the documentation and two, three weeks, one month after, I'm looking to, like I'm looking how I should do X with my own software, the software of my employer or my customers, and I don't remember. Guess what? Because I wrote it well in the documentation, I'm the customer zero. I go back to my doc and I'm like, oh yeah, stupid Fred. <laughs> this is how you wrote that you should do it. So it's even helpful for yourself. So it's good for external documentation, it's good for internal documentation, it's good for the documentation in your code, you know, the thing nobody does. It's also, it's also worth it for that. So I guess we're kind of clear on the benefits. I think nothing was like super new to you, like, oh my God, Fred is the genius that was mind blowing. But I think it was important to talk again about the benefits because we tend to forget those. Documentation is always an afterthought. It shouldn't be. It should be, as I said at the beginning, as important as your product. It should be an integral part of your, what do you call that, like development life cycle. Like the documentation, creation of the good documentation should be part of it. So now we know the benefits, like what about the content? Because this is the talk, like we want to write better documentation, Fred. So the first thing, we're in 2022. If you don't have a search option on your documentation, I want you to take your stuff, go on your feet, get out of the door of that room, and go implement a search feature in your documentation because nothing else matters in that talk if you don't have that. And you may think that you have the best structure of 
documentation well written, if I don't really know the terms that I'm looking for, if I don't know in which sections they are, if the organization of your documentation is good for you but not really for me because I don't know the product, I need a search option. And it's really easy to do. So please, 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 that's the first step. Again, nobody's leaving the room, so I assume you're either really like, uncomfortable with the fact that you don't have a search option, or you all have one. If you do, congratulations, it's the first time. Nobody never left the room, so, but I'm pretty sure there are some people that are like, like oh, people that are avoiding my eyes right now. I, I see you. Second thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a perfectionist that comes with ADHD, uh, which is a good and a bad thing sometimes, but I'm also really trying to be a believer in like the kind of like 80, 20, like 80 percent is, I don't even remember, but you know, like 80 percent of the effort is good enough. Usually it doesn't make sense to like do the last 20, the last stretch, the last 20 person, except when it comes to probably relationship and documentation. So I think documentation, the devils is in the detail. I think it's a stupid idiom, but still, you understand, you know what it is. So I think it's really important for the, documentation, the documentation, so go the extra mile. I was talking about the search option, fine. But now try to organize the structure of your documentation correctly. Try to make proper section. Give a proper title, something that, as a new user, I can understand what that section or page is going to talk about. Give me even an introduction at the beginning of the page. Hey, this page is going to go step by step to how to like, authenticate to my API, authenticate to my API, uh, do your first REST API call. So I know what it is. So be sure that you have a great structure, a great organization. I'm going to show you an example right after. And when I say right after, it's just the next slide. So this is an example. Uh, that was a documentation I worked on in my previous employer with uh, technical writer uh, that was on my team, plus other people in the company. So there was like a, a company of four. But developer relation, my team was responsible for the documentation when I joined the company. And it doesn't matter that much. The text doesn't seem to, is the text OK? It doesn't matter that much. I will explain to you. But as you can see, there's a page. We explain what is the project, uh, what is like the documentation, who is it for. But there is the left section that I want you to focus on. So the first kind of like table of content of how I organize my documentation is the get started. Because the first, thing I want, the first thing I want you to do is to know how you can use the product and how you can do a kind of like hello world. You know, first, REST API call. It doesn't matter if, it's, if it shows all the features of my product, if, it, if it's a mind-blowing example. No. I don't know if I want to use your product as a user. What I want to do is, like, can I use it quickly? Even if it's an L world type of example. So I have to get started, and I go even to basic stuff. How to create your account using the interface. How to create your account. How to get, you make your first request in a platform tour. So if you're more tech savvy, if you already created your account, you can skip those, and you can click only on make your first request, and you're good to go. The second section, account and organization settings. Why is up there? It seemed kind of like basic, but that was a thing where some customers were struggling because a lot of people that were trying to use the software were not always technical, even if it was a product for developers. Sometimes it was like PM, and, and some PMs are technical, some are less technical. And those were really important because this is how you were organizing like, the access, the control to the application, and the billing is kind of important. You know, how much you're going to pay actually the information was on the website, but like how to change uh, your different like tier of uh, service to use the product. The third part was the libraries. And keep in mind, if you go look at a website of my previous employer, uh, the documentation may change a little bit. So I kept the screenshot I had because like I didn't, I was responsible. I was not responsible for the documentation since I left. So I'm not sure of all the change, and I don't want to speak about the change. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm just saying, like, I was not responsible of those, so I prefer to focus on what I know. So the third thing was a section about the libraries, the SDK. Why? Not because it's complicated to use. It's because we wanted user customers to use the SDK instead of just doing an API call directly. Because doing an API call is great, but if you use the SDK, me as a company, the support team, me as a developer advocate, it's way easier to help a user 
or to debug an issue if you use my SDK to do the API call, the API call, then having your own custom code that I don't know what they're doing. So that was one of the way to make developers' life easier. And the documentation was made that, hey, it's one of the first things you see. So even if you know how to do an API call, even if you didn't see on the website that we had SDK, when you go on the documentation, it's in your face. And after that, we had everything else. So a lot more information that was like a really complete documentation. But what you see, though, is that I have sections. But on top of that, I have specific pages that have all the information I need. And it's not like, hey, I have one pages to do everything. I split them. So if you're a more experienced developer or you already know the product, you can jump right away to the section you want to know. So that's one of the things. Organize your documentation appropriately. And you go on a page. There's another way also to help more experienced developer or people that have more experience with your product. Like if you look at the right, there's a table of content inside the page. So now the page can look a little bit like overwhelming. You know, there is like the main documentation table of content, but there's also the table of content of the page. But at first it can seem overwhelming, but at the end, what's great is that I go on that page and I say like, hey, you know what? I already know how to use Python, so I don't know to, to see how to install it and everything. I already installed it. I just want to see like, what's the API call, and then what variable you're going to return to me like. I'm going to return a JSON response. What's going to be in that response? So I can click on the table of content and go to the right information, the information that I want. So by doing that, you help less experienced people by having all the information you need, but you also help people that have more experience because they can just go to the right information. So I guess you get the point. It's not super complicated, but it's so important. One of the things that we messed often is code example. And this is just one little bit of example that is, I think, a pet peeve of me. You know, when you don't want to show, sometimes you don't need to show all the examples of the code. You know, I was returning a JSON response that is that big. Like, but I want to focus on just a part of the code. Sometimes it's important to show the full response. Sometimes it's not. So a convention that we always forget is, first thing, just show the part of the code that makes sense, unless the people won't understand what is happening if you show only part of the code. But it's always about focusing on the right thing. And you may not see them right now, but there's those three dots at the end. So that means that for that old co code here, I only showed the first part because I wanted to show like just a list of members. So I put a three dots that says like, hey, that's not the full JSON response. It's just part of it. Same thing if you do the other way around. You just want to show the bottom, put the three points at the top. Again, that show people that, hey, it's just part of the JSON response. And you can go crazy and just show like in the middle and doing like the three dots at the top at the end. So again, the three dots are not that important here. Even if it's a convention, like people should do that in JSON documentation when you show just part of it. The important part is that even for code, you should really focus on what's important. I said it before, but I want to say it again. So this one, do, do you have an idea what that picture is? Uh, you know nothing, Jon Snow. I don't think it's Jon Snow, I don't think it's the actor, but he looked like it was winter, and I think that was the goal of taking that picture. But always write your documentation as if the people reading your documentation know fuck all about your software. Like, always. But if you have a great organization, if you have a great structure, a great table of content, again, people who don't want to read everything will just be able to skip and go to the right content. In addition, you know, I was having like a use Python as DK. I did not explain how to install Python on your computer because it's not my project, it's not my, it's not my programming language, it's not my product. But what I did, I point people to the official documentation of Python how to install it. So I'm not responsible for that part. I, obviously, I'm going to help my users if they have any issue. But I'm not responsible for that documentation because it's not my product. But I'm pointing people to the right documentation. Some people who write documentation won't do that because they say, like, hey, that brings people outside of my medium. It's good in those cases. You really help developer go step by step. So even when it's not your product or even something that is more common right now than you use a couple of years, like JSON. Like maybe someone doesn't really, or REST API, and people doesn't really know what does that mean to have a REST API. Maybe you want to explain a little bit. Maybe you want to point to a Wikipedia article about REST API, what it is. So again, you bring more values to people that have a little less knowledge or don't have the knowledge that they need to use your product without being responsible of that. 
pictures, images, screenshots, under, undervalued, I was looking for the word in English, undervalued, but so important. Great quality screen capture, great quality images, make the difference between like a poor experience or a documentation that looks bad to something that really gives a great experience. So put the quality in the documentation and in the screenshot and images that you put in your code. And now I know it's a dangerous statement because I've seen codes of some of people writing. So just try to do better if your code sucks. But yeah, have great images. <laughs> focus, focus, focus on the right thing too. You know, when you take screenshot, when you take images, uh, if I have something like that, you know, I'm showing the screen, it's in the web interface where you can create the API key to access the service. It's a full screen. And obviously, I don't want people to see my API keys, even if I delete it after, but you know, you don't want this in the future because people would try it and blah, blah, blah. So I put a black bar on it. That's ugly. That's really ugly. Because that takes the focus, like, what is the first thing you look in that picture? Like, probably the black bar. It's in your face, it's there, it's ugly, it doesn't fit. Use a proper software to take screenshot and make bigger, better screenshots. Look at this one. I just blur the key. And you're like, Fred, it just took like two minutes of my life to tell me not to put a black square. But seriously, the image is way better like this. It fits within the page. It doesn't take all the focus. Obviously, you're going to look that there because it looks weird to have like all those squares. And you're going to understand I'm hiding the key. And you understand that there is a key there. But it's way more beautiful. But even that, it's a, a little bit too much. You know, on the left, I have that kind of like menu. On the top, I have the editor. But what I really want to show with that screenshot is how to create an API key. So why not going from this to, oh, sorry. I, I focus on the wrong stuff. I want you to generate a key. So like, I want you to show like, hey, the next step in like, creating your API key is to push that button. And yeah, it seems like overkill to show how to push a button, but trust me, you need those steps for some type of users. So why not like, um, what's the word? Uh, putting the rest a little more dark or around the button. So again, you have all the interface. It's visual. You see what it is. I'm not hiding everything except the API key. But you know exactly where I want you to click. So I'm taking the user by the end. And sometimes it's necessary. So my point I wanted. Highlight. Highlight. Yeah, highlight. Yeah, you can highlight. The, it's not the word I was looking for. It's smart hat. Smart hat. But uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, I know the guy, so that's why I can say stupid things to him. I'm not mean like this to everyone, just some people. So the point that I wanted to do two slides before, but I, 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 I missed the point, is that, yeah, you know you have the left bar, the top bar, it's too much information. I, we don't care in that screenshot about all the other options, because it's a screenshot about how to create your API keys. So instead of thinking, I see so many documentation with just like a screenshot of the full screen the browser tab and your, your Mac menu bar and all those things. Like, we don't care about those things. What I want to show you, I want you to focus on the screen about creating the API. So seems like a detail, super important. I'm not affiliate with CleanShot. It's just a software that I use for a while. It's a paid software, though. It's on Mac OS. Uh, but I really love it because that gave me the opportunity to do exactly what I've shown you. So you know, I'm taking a screenshot here. I can open the screenshot, and I can say, like, hey, you know what? Blur that, it's offending. Or, you know, show just that part. And that's gonna give the same, I don't know why there was that white line there, but yeah. Uh, that's gonna give the same example that I showed. And it took me like 30 seconds, and now like I'm a professional screenshot. Ah, come on, it's a profession. Like, do you think I can earn a lot of money doing that? Anyway, it's just a great software. Again, not making money or anything. Uh, I don't even know the people working on that software. I just used it for a year. Saved me a lot of time. Easy. It's not super expensive. Unfortunately, I cannot suggest you any other type of tool because this is the one I'm using for years and I'm on Mac, so I, I don't feel confident to suggest any other tool. But there is plenty, plenty, plenty of tools to take a screenshot out there. Just choose the one that makes sense for you. And you can just use the built-in screenshot feature on your OS and use something like Photoshop or GIMP or, 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 or whatever, uh, Paint on Windows to just like adjust the screenshot correctly. It doesn't matter. What matters is a great experience. When you had image and screenshot, add the alt description. Make those accessible. It's super important because I assume most people in the room like 
you, you may not, or, or even like, I'm visually impaired. I mean, if I remove my glasses, I, I, you look way better like that, by the way. But if I remove my glasses, I struggle reading. And there's people that uh, are visually impaired. So we need to think about the people that cannot see the image of screenshot. So two things you need to keep in mind with that. First is always have the image and screenshot as an addition to the text. So always define the documentation with the text. And the image is there, the image of screenshot is there only just as a support. If I remove the image, I should be able to use your application. I should not need the image. You're just there for people that are visual, because most of us are visual. They're there for people that want to go quicker, that don't want to read everything. And uh, they just had a layer of experience to the documentation. Also, write great documentation. So how, how would you put the alt text for that? Like, what would you describe there? Just one or two person try. Don't be shy. Sorry, louder. I, I didn't hear the first word, but creepy. creepy. So the thing, it's, it's a great example. Creepy. <laughs> Actually, I never thought about that. Now, now I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Uh, I didn't thought it was creepy. So you know, uh, also with the alt text, it's another reason. It's a good example. Thank you. Uh, it's another reason why it should be an addition, because how we see things or how we interpret things are different. Like I never thought it was creepy. Now it's the only thing I'm thinking about. But you have a chance where you can say, like, hey, you know, uh, monkey with white hair, brown hair, eating a banana and smiling in the jungle where there is greens, like it's too long. B, this is it. Like, it's a happy monkey eating a banana. And you, you said, I think, I, I don't think you said banana, you just said, like, oh, you said banana? But sometimes you're just eating. You know, it's missing information. So try to be direct with the whole description. Not had too many things, so it's like it's way too much, but just enough that like if I don't see the images, I can at least have an idea. So obviously I cannot like if I don't see the images. If I don't see the images. <laughs> uh, if I don't see, sorry, if I don't see, I did not even drink. If I don't see uh, the picture, I can still have an idea. There is a monkey. I don't know what it looks like, but it had to the information. Don't have uh, alt text for uh, uh, functional things, or at least like, oh, there is a button that you click to save. Had those two, like the things that had uh, the information. Unless I'm wrong, but it's usually the way to go. One other thing we don't do, we write the documentation and we're good to go. No, review your documentation. Again, sounds like stupid what I say most of the time, but especially right now. Uh, review your documentation. So write something, write a page, a new feature, and tomorrow take the time to read it again or ask a colleague to read it. You will be surprised how just doing that would improve the documentation. Because sometimes we do stupid typos. It doesn't look professional. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't look professional. Sometimes we copy paste things by moving things around and we missed half of the sentence. Or sometimes it's totally clear when we write it and we read it after and like, what the hell happened when I wrote that? So just taking the time to review those, it really helps. Same thing with the code. But it will do it in the proper way. When you have code example, if you do a tutorial, go step by step doing the tutorial yourself. Don't write the code down. Copy and paste the code to be sure that if someone does that, it's working. Really important. Sometimes you're going to miss like a coma. Sometimes you're going to put like a weird uh, single quote that's does not work in like different format and like it, it looks good on text, but when, when you put in your code, you have like an error. So do that, it's super, super important. The other thing that you should have that is real basic, had a copy button, a clone button, copy button. I was like, ah, this guy is nice. Yeah, had a copy, you know, those things like those little icons like copy in the clipboard because developer were all lazy. And for those of you that said you're not, you're just lying to yourself. We're all a little bit lazy. So, and what I want to do, what you want to do, is that if I want to try your software, I want to do it quickly. Sometimes I'm just going to copy paste the example, see if it's connect. If it doesn't work, maybe I'm going to have a bad impression of like your documentation or your software if I'm not able to connect. So I'm just going to copy paste. I want to test your application quickly to see if I can use it, if it makes sense for me. You're not a technical writer, or if you are good for you, nothing is new for you here, hopefully. But write the doc is the one link to rule them all. It's a community, it's a conference, but it's also a community, again, 
not making any money out of it, not making, it's just like a great community. They have a Slack community. It's a great place if you want to ask questions. They have a website with a lot of resources. resources. And also, I think, a GitHub repo with so many resources about writing, not just for a technical writer. It's, it's the place to be, it's a place to get the information. So, good example of documentation. Again, no affiliation. Stripe, great documentation when it comes to the API. They have multiple products, but they describe them very well in the documentation. It's clean, it's working, it's beautiful. Every time I look at the Stripe documentation, I cry a little bit, so beautiful. Twilio, I'm not saying that because you're a sponsor, but thanks for sponsoring the conference. Twilio, also great documentation. Uh, they're doing also super well with, when it comes to developer relations for years, so they have great documentation also. GitHub, GitHub is doing also a great job. Again, not because they're sponsoring the events, uh, and also not, I worked in Microsoft a couple of years ago, but my, GitHub was another Microsoft. Well, there is no relation, it's just, I like that. But what they do really good, GitHub is probably one of the best examples. Not that the other one are not good, but GitHub has documentation about how to use the product on the web, the visual product. How to use their CLI. They have documentation how to use their API and different API. They have like a REST API, and I think a GraphQL API. So they have documentation about the interface, about the usage, about the CLI, about like everything you can use, and it's well done. It's well done. So content is good. Now we have a good content. We need to think about the container too. Container is important. Please make it fast. I don't even know why I'm saying that, but you know, you go on a website, it's slow. It's, it's like any website. Documentation is as important as your marketing website or the f like, uh, time to first buy for, for your API or website, whatever. Like, make it fast. Like, I want to access the documentation. I don't want to wait forever to get access to the documentation. And I shouldn't have to say that. Unfortunately, if it's there, it's because there is a reason. I have seen documentation that are so slow because they're, like, hosted in, like, I don't know, really bad, like, uh, uh, cloud offering that is slow, they don't put money on the documentation, it's just freaking slow. Uh, make it fast, make it accessible on different device. There are weird people right now coding on iPad. I don't know how you do that, maybe I'm too old, I need a laptop to code. But make it accessible on, la on, a, on a iPad, on a phone. You know, you're in the bus coming back from, uh, from work, and you're just like, I really need to fix that issue. And you look at the documentation on your phone. So make your documentation responsive. Again, shouldn't have to say that in 2022 because most websites should be at least responsive. Not the case. I really like, I really have like, why did I put that in it? I think I just found the little guy super cute. No, uh, actually, yeah, I remember now, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's not the time to show your prof proficiency, profi profi I don't know why I struggle with that one in English. It's not the time to show that you're good when it comes to write in English. This is why synonym exists. Because uh, your documentation may probably be in English to make it more accessible for more people, but how many people have English as the first language in the room right now? Your mother tongue, how many? Seriously, two people out of, I don't know. Okay, I consider myself bilingual, but English is not my first language. So most, many of your users won't have English as their first language, so if you had like, com if you use complex word, because you just want to showcase that you know complex word, it may have a learning curve for people, it may have another barrier, entry, a barrier to entry to your product, because now they're gonna struggle to understand the documentation, so keep it simple, stupid. You know the, I'm not saying that you're stupid, you know the, please tell me you know the idiom, yeah, okay. I'm not telling you you're all stupid. We are developer, we like to create things, we like to build things. When it comes to documentation, it's not the time to do that. When you work on the documentation, your focus, your time, your energy should be about writing the documentation. So use something that already exists out there to like have host your documentation, to show your documentation to the people. Because I've worked to so many places where they build their own documentation. And after six months, one year, we were like, uh, maybe it doesn't work anymore. Maybe we don't have the time. Maybe we need to take the time now to switch to a proper platform because it doesn't answer your need, because it was cool at the beginning, it's not cool anymore. So use something that already exists. Make it open source, even if your product is not open, because that can, you can crowdsource your documentation. It doesn't mean that people will write like full documentation about new feature, probably won't happen, unless it's an open source project, a uh, product also you have. Uh, even that doesn't happen often. 
but you have a typo, sometimes gonna someone's going to fix it. Something could be clearer, someone's going to add it or fix it for you. So uh, it may not be the case, it may take time because you need to build a community, but it's also a great way to you know, get people involved and, and, and show people that you care about their input too. So you may not agree with all the PR, but still, it's a good practice to do. Make the system you're going to use easy for everyone to write or update the documentation. You know, I had a really functional way of making the documentation work on the previous company. We're using Markdown on GitHub. Uh, we're synchronizing with README with a, like a GitHub action. It was working super well. And I was like, Markdown is not super complicated. And even if you, uh, that's super pretentious. It's not complicated for most developers. And uh, you know, even if you don't know how to use the CLI for GitHub, you can use the interface. And, and now they did a really good job that it's not super complicated, even if you're not super technical to do a PR. I was wrong. PM and other people at a company were not about to really do a good job at helping us with the, uh, the documentation. So make the process so even non-technical people can help you. It doesn't, need that, it doesn't mean that you need to open to everyone. But make it easy for most people to help you or the people that you want to give access or that could help you with your documentation. Markdown is a favorite of me. The syntax is not that complicated. You can use vi file versioning. It's really easy to see like different version. Uh, it may not give you super styling like any other type of like ways of writing the documentation, but I think it's pretty good. And there is enough tool out there, editor, that have like the WYSIWYG. So if, even if you don't know the markdown syntax, you can have like that toolbar to make things bold or to add a link. Uh, great tools out there. Bring me. If you don't need to do a lot of modification, uh, if you don't have a lot of people Modifying the documentation is a good tool. Outside of that, they struggle a lot, but they're working to make the process better. Uh, Dr. Zoris, if you want to host your own thing, it's open source. It was started by Facebook, if I'm not wrong. Uh, aside of that, it's a really good tool. Uh, and it's great because, because it's open source. You can have a mix between you don't have to build the things, but it's easier to extend or to add anything or even to add plugging if you want to have a custom use. But you shouldn't have that much custom use. It's documentation. It's quite standard. Read the docs. Uh, use a little more by Python folks, but uh, it's a great place to, uh, to host your documentation. And basically, any static type generator or, or whatever that helps you to show information to someone can make sense for the documentation. You don't need something complex. You need something that works, that is fast, and that is easier to access for people. There's also a uh, rest of your text. I put it because uh, Python folks would be pissed off right now. Uh, it's a great way to write documentation this way. Uh, <laughs> and Spanx to generate the documentation. It's also a great, uh, great alternative. Uh, so in the end, I know you may be like, oh my god, Fred, like, you said so many awesome things. Your documentation is not good. You do that. If you do that at the end of the talk, it's a good sign. It means that you realize that, yeah, OK, documentation is not perfect. I can improve it. I can work on some of the stuff in my documentation. But it's OK if you don't do it right now. I just plant the seed. Hopefully, that will grow. And you will, at some point, update your documentation or help other people that work in the documentation not work if you don't. It's always a work in progress. Documentation is never perfect. There's always something you can improve. So you need to find the right mix between, like, the devos is in the details, and not going too crazy also with the documentation. As long as it appeals to everyone, that you have all the information that people need, that you're able to take the user step by step by the end, like, hey, I'm going to show you how to use my product, but also experts are going to be able to pinpoint what they really need, I think you're good to go. So there, you can start with like basic documentation and slowly improve it. Just don't put it on a side burner, because you're going to forget it, and your documentation is still going to suck in one year. So you want to constantly improve your documentation. It's your superpower. That's the link with the title. <laughs> it's your superpower. It's undervalued. It's always an afterthought. I'm repeating myself, but it's super important. But there's one thing you need to remind outside of the search option, <laughs> is that documentation is important. It's the point of entry to using your software, your service, your API, whatever you're offering to developer. If it's not good, you're not going to be successful. If it's just OK, you may be successful, but you could do a lot better. So it's really your superpower. Don't put this as a side project. Don't put it as an afterthought. When you build your product, 
build the documentation. Maybe not one-to-one -one because, you know, things change, but like when you're close to launch a new product, a new feature, like start as soon as possible to write the documentation. When things are like, in, let's say in the beta phase, where like you're good enough, like things won't change too much, or alpha phase. Write the documentation, it's important. It may not be your job. If you work in a company, you can, you, you, you can hire someone to do that. Hire a technical, either someone full time, you would be surprised how much a technical writer can be useful for a company, not just for the documentation, for everything text based, that person can help you write proper sentences, ensure that you do less mistake in English. You know, as I said, English is my second language. Uh, French is the first one, but a good French. The French from Quebec, not the one from France. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and I make mistakes. I still make mistakes, I'm sure. I was making a lot more mistakes in the past. And I was writing blog posts and things, and people understood what I meant. Were they as good as they should have been? Were they as professional as they should have looked? No. So hiring someone where the language is their expertise, writing is their expertise, is a really good investment. You can also have a consultant help you to do that, someone part-time. Uh, there is many resources out there, but obviously if you can do it, please do it. And that's gonna be beneficial for you because you, you're gonna improve yourself. While you write, the better you're gonna write, the more you write, the better you're gonna write. And communication, not just verbal, is a skill that is beneficial in every type of job. So, I heard other people applaud. I think they were applauding. No, I was <laughs> no, that's good. Continue. Continue. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. No, I, was not <laughs> I was just saying that because I, like, I think my time is done. But yeah, okay, it's good. I like you. You're a good crowd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I used not to have a beer, but I just like that picture with one of my cats. Is she cute? She's so fat, but she's cute. Anyway, my name is Fred. Uh, I'm offering developer relation as a service, so that was not a product pitch, but I can help you with documentation if, if you have any need. With that said, uh, you can write me an email. I'm gonna be here, ask me questions. I don't think we have time for questions right now. Uh, not sure about the timing, but uh, you can send me an email. You can ping me on Twitter. I spend way too much time there. You can connect on LinkedIn, as I said before. You can even, uh, if you go on fred.dev slash coffee, you can schedule a 30 minute chat with me, what I call coffee chat, to talk about developer documentation or whatever else tech or with your career or, ta or talk about cat or uh, like craft beer, like anything, 30 minute call. Obviously I'm not charging, it's just like a friendly chat with people after that all the time. So on that note, how are we doing on time? I think we're done, huh? Eh? We're done? Someone is checking the time? No? Yeah, what time is it? Sir? Oh, I think right on time. So uh, if you have any common question and salt, I'm just going to be in the big room right after. So thanks for attending the talk. <laughs>